Hi, I'm Greg Miller. I'm in the eighth grade social studies teacher at Seward Middle School, and I am going to talk to you about the importance of creating experiences for your students at the middle school level, and it could be at the high school and elementary level as well. Uh, I have been teaching eighth grade social studies here in Seward for the last 13 years. Um, I've taught fifth grade for three of those years, and then I've taught eighth grade since then. Um, when I was teaching eighth grade and I wanted to make social studies curriculum come alive for them, I thought about what I remember from my middle school years. And as I looked at what I remember from my middle school years, it really became a matter of I remembered experiences. Dressing as Paul Revere to do a book talk, going on a certain field trip, those kind of things, and I thought that's what I need to create for my students. And to help them think historically as well. So I set up different simulations to where they might be a come of figure from history. Um, they might become, they draw cards and they become either a senator or a president or just someone from history in the unit that we're covering and then they need to think from that way. They do a lot of journaling, those kind of things from that level. I also let them become a fictional character. For our westward expansion unit, they draw cards to become either a railroader or a miner or a homesteader, and then they do journals from that experience as well. And they kind of become that character, or even go so far as, as dressing in character on at least one day when they introduce themselves. So they really do remember that as well. Um, another thing for simulations I do is I, I, I give them a lot of this, which is fake money. And it teaches some economic lessons as well about currency, supply and demand, those kind of things. Um, for our Roaring Twenties and our Great Depression unit, during the Roaring Twenties, they're getting a lot of money. There's a lot of money floating around. There's a lot of fun. They can sell things. I keep my hands off. And then the Great Depression hits, and they draw a card that basically tells them they've lost all their money, and they find out what it's like to be poor. And then they learn that they can't sell anything because no one has any money to buy. Um, as you can tell, we've got a bank, we do loans, there's all sorts of things. They learn about debt, they learn about interest. It really, really works well. So fake money is golden with that. Um, we also do an immigration simulation where the room is split into haves and have-nots. The haves have more money, they have food, all those different kind of things. Food works great in the classroom, by the way. Let them bring it. They have a great time with it, um, and they'll run through a wall for it. Uh, we also do probably one of their favorites is World War I and World War II dodgeball, to where we get to go down in our little gym, and we set up some trenches, if you will, with mats and things like that. They find out what it's like to go into, into no man's land. And it's something that they definitely remember. It's always a favorite at the end of your survey. So those are just some examples of simulations that I do. But I think the main thing is in your subject area, no matter what you teach, is to find a way to apply real life applications and to just create experiences for them. Because that really is what they remember. That helps them remember what you did. And it helps them also learn the concepts so much better because all of a sudden it has application purposes for them. So with that being said, I just encourage you to do the same. Find out and just think, how can I use fake money? How can I recreate this somehow? And believe me, you'll be better off for it. And more importantly, the students will learn more effectively from it as well. Thank you.